I'm wearing a wizard hat because it's about keto, which is like magic. Hey everybody, Techie 101 here, and as I said, this is a video all about Keto. We are learning about every single spell shown in the series, both canon and non-canon, every named spell anyway. Uh, and to give you a better scope in the uh, interesting craft, uh, this is one of the four main battle techniques of the Shinigami, so you'd think there'd be a lot to it. Um, funny thing is, we don't exactly know how Keto works, or how one learns it. Uh, we understand that you have to use your Riatsu as sort of like a uh, fuel for it, and you convert your Riatsu into kind of like spells and shit but we don't exactly know how you learn the spells and shit uh, there are incantations that are involved but there's probably a method to learning it a little bit better because there's people that are clearly more adept at using keto than others um but uh, whatever. Anyway, we'll be getting into it. Uh, of course, they are broken up into two broad categories, Bakuda and Hado, but there's, been, there's a bunch of other spells that have been like created by certain characters like Uahara and the like that are a little bit different, as well as uh, barrier techniques and stuff like that. So we'll get to all of them. But first off, let's start with Bakudo, or the Way of Binding. Now, going by the translation of Bakudo, you might think these are all defensive spells, like putting up shields and binding your opponent and stuff like that. While there are quite a few that do do that, uh, there are many spells in the Bakudo set that are more broad than that. Uh, there's spells that work by scanning or reconnaissance, uh, some that can uh, telecommunicate with each other. Uh, so pretty much anything that isn't uh, an offensive spell can be included in Bakudo, uh, except for healing keto, which is something else altogether. But let's start right with number one. Bakudo number one is Restrain. It was first used by Rukia in the very first chapter or the first episode of the series to restrain Ichigo. It works by uh, forcibly locking the opponent's arms behind their back. Uh, Ichigo, though, before he was even able to activate his Shinigami powers, was able to break this. So it's possible that maybe Rukia was going a little bit easy on him, or that any human that has a decent amount of Riatsu can, you know, break these bindings. Bakudo number four is Hainawa. Uh, this is like another binding spell similar to Sai. It creates a swirling energy rope around your hand that you can fling at your opponents and restrain them. Um, I like to think of this as the weaker version of Sajo Sabaku, which is going to be later down the list. Whereas that is like a powerful energy chain, this is more like an energy rope. So it doesn't restrain your opponent that much if they're really strong, but it's interesting in delaying them, or you can use it to grab onto things like a grappling hook, for instance. Bakudo number eight is Seki. Uh, Uketake was the first one to use this. It creates like a round shield around the back of your hand, or I'm assuming you could use it any part of your body. That's just where Uketake chose to use it. Uh, any part of your opponent that comes in contact with this shield gets blasted away or repelled as if it was a shockwave. Pretty handy. Bakudo number 21 is Seki Enten, or Red Smoke Escape. As the name implies, it creates a huge explosion of red smoke in front of the caster. It doesn't injure the opponent in any way, uh, more as it serves as an escape tactic, you know, to distract your opponent or obscure their vision long enough so you can run away. And most certainly, it's a uh, very handy keto for Omida. Bakudo 26 is Kyooko, or Bent Light, a technique that, as the name implies, bends the light around the user so they can seem to be invisible. However, if you're skilled enough, you can rip right through it, as Shinji did to Aizen. Now, of course, Aizen is Aizen, so he probably let Shinji find him on purpose, used a very deliberate low-level Keto, but it's pretty handy for, uh, you know, stealth. Bakudo number 30 is Shitotsu Sansen. The caster creates three fangs that can be launched at the opponent, pinning them to a large structure behind them. Bakudo number 37 is Sarari Boshi. Uh, it creates sort of like a net, which has like a sort of trampoline bouncy effect to it. It can be used in midair, and it basically latches onto structures around it. I guess they could be buildings or trees or whatever. The primary method of this is to uh, catch falling objects. It was used quite a lot during the fight with Ion, because uh, Shinigami were dropping like flies in that fight. Oh yeah. Bakudo 39 is Enkosen. Pretty much just creates a normal round shield in front of you. Uh, it's not a very high level Bakudo, so if your opponent's strong enough, it'll rip right through it. Uh, Izuru used it in his fight against Avarama, but it didn't really go anywhere. Pretty much got shredded almost immediately. Pretty basic shielding kind of, uh, kind of Bakudo. Bakudo number 58, Kaku Shitsui Jaku. This is one of those keto that I talked about that doesn't really have anything to do with defending so much as scanning and reconnaissance. So this is one of the keto that actually requires the user or to uh, actually draw a symbol on the ground of a circle with a bunch of different characters in it, and then after pressing their hands onto the ground inside of the circle, it basically works as like a radar, I guess. We don't exactly know how it works, but after using it, the person can like read out numbers, like um, Isane used it to find out where Aizen and Gein had left. I guess it works 
works by Rayatsu Signature or something like that. Anyway, after using it, she was relaying the information to Unohana. She was rattling off a bunch of numbers. Maybe they work like longitude and latitude or something like that. She was like, all right, let's find out where Aizen and Gein went. You know, 37, 15, 42. Oh, they're at the Sokyoku Hill. So maybe it works like something like that. Very handy to track people, although we don't know exactly the full, you know, extent of, you know, who you can and cannot track. If there's a limit on it or distance or if you can track somebody that goes between worlds or whatever. Bakudo 61, Riko Jokoro, a very heavily used Bakudo in the series. It was used by Byakuya mostly, who is the most proficient at it, according to Aaron Yero. Uh, it's basically a technique that binds the opponent with six uh, restraints of light, very similar to uh, Bakudo number 30, except with, you know, doubled, obviously. That was only with three. This is with six. Uh, it's also notable to mention that even though the, uh, the bars of light that uh, bind the opponent are limited to usually around their waist, it actually restrains their entire body, because when Byakuya used it again, against Rukia when she was being controlled by Zomari. You know, Zomari was like, all right, I command Rukia to slit her throat with her sword. And even though the pillars of light weren't even touching her hands or all, they were binding her at her waist, her amazing waist, um, she couldn't move her sword. It couldn't even move a single inch. So it pretty much kind of like paralyzes or numbs the entire body, essentially. Bakudo number 62 is Hyopin Khan, uh, one of my favorite Kidos and the signature technique of Shuhei Asagi. So this technique creates uh, basically a giant uh, iron girder or like a staff or like a fence post that's used by the, the uh, caster and then they fling at the opponent and then it multiplies multiple times in the air multiplies multiple times, there's a shit ton of them, and then manage to pin the opponent to the uh, whatever structure they're against, you know, depending on whatever part of them hits. Apparently they get, like, similar to Rico Jokoro, gets them paralyzed to an extent, you know, even getting hit by one of these things, you know, has a lot of force behind it, apparently. Bakudo number 63 is Sajo Sabaku, the technique that I said is very similar to Hainawa, whereas Hainawa is like a normal, like, rope, uh, Sajo Sabaku is basically like an energy chain that is much more efficient at restraining the opponent. Although I still think every time it was used, it was almost immediately broken by whoever they used it on. Yeah. Bakudo 73 is uh, Tozan Show, which also works as sort of a barrier keto. It creates an upside-down pyramid... I guess that can be used to prevent uh, people from seeing you or attacking you, uh, and maybe you can also imprison people inside of it. Izuru used it to give him a, you know, a space to work in to heal up Momo and Rangiku while Ion was attacking, but Ion could probably break through it quite easily. Bakudo 75 is Gochu Tekken. Oh, this is an awesome technique. This is the one Hachi used against Ichigo when he was uh, during his uh, hollow training at the Visored Hideout. So Hachi clasps his hand together and like these five symbols float out between his fingers and then he slams them on the ground and those five symbols all become five giant still pillars. Each one's like a story high connected by chains and then they literally flatten right on the opponent, like pin them to the ground. You'd think they would get flattened like a pancake, but I guess if you're strong enough, whatever. Um, Ichigo was able to break through these quite easily after he activated his full hollow mode and he was all going berserker, but still a pretty interesting move. Bakudo 77 is Tente Kura. This is also a very handy uh, communication type of Kido, very similar to Kaku Shitsui Jaku. You need to have special markings in order to make it work like a segmented pattern on your hand. Uh, after activating it, it's, it's, it's called uh, like the Heavenly Skynet or something. No, not that Skynet. It's basically like telepathy, though. Isane used it to announce to the entire Soul Society, you know, what's going on with Aizen. But I would assume she also, like, restricted it so that Aizen and Gein and all the traitors wouldn't have heard it. So the caster can choose which people get, you know, directed toward the message and which ones don't. Uh, it was also used by Tozen uh, during when, uh, you know, Aizen was about to invade the Soul Society to let everybody know in Hueco Mundo that he basically, you know, I win, bitch, fuck off. Uh, it was also used in the Final Year Blood War arc. However, I think it was still stated that uh, Tente Kura only allows the caster's voice to be heard. It's, it's not a two-way channel, so uh, someone that's receiving the message can't relay it back to the caster. In order to do that, you, they have these, like, uh, these blades that you throw on the ground and that can pick up sounds and stuff, and that's the way that you can get two-way communication. Um, seems kind of cumbersome, but hey, you got magic, I guess there's a limit to what it can do, right? Bakudo 79 is Kuyoshibari. Oh my god, this is such a cool one. It was only used one time by Uohara when he was like spamming all those keto on Aizen to keep him restrained. He uses Rika Jokoro, Sajo Sabaku, and this one, Kyoshibari. Basically, it creates nine like black holes or black suns as they're referred to in the literal translation all around the user. Eight around them and then one right in their center. And I guess it's like through the gravity of these like um, these balls that like restrain the user in one place. It has like a really cool design anyway. Bakudo 81. Danku. 
Oh my god, this is such a cheap keto. All right, so this creates a barrier. However, unlike Encosen, this barrier is actually worth a fuck. How worth the fuck is it? Well, the barrier is huge to start with. It's like, you know, like the size of like a two-story building, and it completely shuns any Hotto spell level 89 or lower. I'm going to repeat that again. It completely shuns, blocks out completely, Every Hotto spell, level 89 or lower. We're going to get into some really badass Hotto spells in a minute, and this thing is cheap as all hell, but hey, it makes a pretty cool aesthetic when, you know, Aizen's walking away from Tessai and he uses a level 88 Keto, and uh, it, it is just like, Donku. Done. Whatever. Bakudo 99 is kind of unique because it's the only keto that's actually broken into two parts. Bakudo 99 part 1 is keen, which basically works by binding the opponent. The uh, caster puts his fingers together sort of like in this interlocking pattern, and then a bunch of these uh, like like metal bands come down and then restrain the opponent, and then these like metal spikes come in and like chain that band to the ground. It seems rather simple compared to like the other kind of Bakudos we've had. We've had like five giant pillars pinning the opponent to the ground, and then we had freaking uh, like nine suns being summoned to trap the opponent by gravity to a, just a bunch of metal bands that, you know, pin the person to the ground, but it's the highest level Bakudo for a reason. Um, it was the only spell capable of binding a uh, holified Kensei. Uh, Hachi was using Sajo Sabaku and, and, and uh, Gochi Tenkan on him, and the, he broke through those no problem, but it was Keen the thing that actually managed to break him down. The only person that was able to officially break it was Ichigo when he was undergoing his uh, training at the Uohara shop, but Ichigo's Ichigo. Once again, he's the exception to every rule. He has so much latent power in him. It doesn't make, it makes perfect sense to me how he was able to break through it. Uh, Bakudo 99 part two is Bunkeen or like the final seal. This one actually in and itself comes to us in three parts. So the first part of Bind Keen is basically uh, restraining the opponent with cloth uh, entirely. The second part then, you know, staples them with like a bunch of like little tiny like bolts, I guess, or screws all over their body. And the final one, despite this being a Bakudo spell, a binding spell, I think this is why it was 99 because it actually can kill the opponent, which is what Tessai was actually trying to do. He was trying to subjugate Ichigo before he became a full hollow. It summons a giant stone or steel block. I, I I guess saying steel is not really accurate because it's made out of Riatsu, but whatever. Giant fuck off stone block that literally just <laughs> crashes down on the opponent, completely smashing them into oblivion. Yeah, I guess, no, no, they're just sealed. Yeah, I'm sure they're just sealed away. No, I mean, there's brains over there and his skull's over there and he's just a pile of goo and blood and what, I don't know what the fuck that is, but yeah, um, he's sealed, totally. Sealed for all time. He's dead, basically. This spell will kill you. So beyond that, we also have a few interesting other Bakudos, uh, spells that were referred to as Bakudos, and we know their name, we just don't know their number. Probably the most uh, uh, prevalent in the story was Hakufuku. This is a technique that uh, both Momo and Gin used that apparently knocks out the uh, enemy and they uh, shuns out their Riatsu, so when you use it on somebody, it blocks out their Riatsu so no one else can sense it. Gin used this on Rangiku to knock her ass out, and so Aizen could not sense her Riatsu anymore, and then when they wake up, they're apparently like in a daze, like they were like hung over, like what the fuck did I do last night? Um, so, interesting level Bakudo, probably a decent level there. Next, we have Inamuri, which was used by Yamamoto on Momo to uh, make her go to sleep. It's referred to as forced slumber, so it's just like, okay, time to go night-night, Momo, and she's like, all right. Uh, then we have the more brutal timeout drop that was used by Shinji on Ichigo to prepare him for his visor training, uh, while as uh, Inamuri just makes you go to sleep, this one actually forcibly, you know, knocks your ass out. Uh, then we have Shibira Yumi, which was used by Urahara on Rukia, which is re simply referred to as the numbing finger. So basically, Urahara just, like, taps Rukia and... That yeah, came out wrong. Uh, Urahara fingers Rukia. Okay, that's better. And uh, it forcibly makes her entire body goes numb. So you're still awake, you're still conscious, but you have you can't move your body at all. It actually kind of sounds like the date rape keto, sort of. Ugh. Why does Urahara know that? Why is it called numbing finger? Why do you use it on Rukia? Okay, so that was all the Bakudo. Now we're moving on to the Hado spells. Now, as the name implies, Hado, Way of Destruction, there's not a lot of bunch of uh, diversity with these spells. The goal here is to launch an attack that will injure or kill your opponent. So most of these are pretty straightforward. We start off with the weakest one, Hado number one, Show or Push. Like Psy, it's not that really difficult to use, and it's pretty simple. All it does is simply push your opponent away from you. So, you know, somebody's entering your personal space, you're like, show, bitch, and just, boom! 
Auto number four, Byakurai. Having a little bit of a step up from just pushing someone away to shooting lightning from your fucking fingers. Byakurai or Pale Lightning is a very uh, relatively uh, common uh, keto spell in the series. It's used by Byakia a lot. Uh, basically, yeah, you just uh, pull out your finger and then it shoots out a stream of lightning. It's probably not very powerful, but if you know how to use it, it can be very effective as when Byakia used it against Ichigo when he had him pinned with his Senkei. Uh, Byakia pressed his finger up against Ichigo's shoulder and then blasted a hole clean through it, so it's pretty strong if used by a keto master. Hado number 11 is Suzui Ryzen, uh, a technique that used by Shuhei Asagi. Basically, it means uh, bound lightning, and it uh, works by, I guess you have to hold something in your hand that can conduct electricity, uh, as Shuhei had his Kazashini wrap the chain around Ion, and then use Suzui Ryzen to have an electrical current running through his uh, Kazashini that shocked the hell out of Ion. Didn't work, but it was a pretty interesting technique. Hado number 12 is Fushibi. Now, this was a technique that was actually combined with a few other spells by Momo when she was making that keto net that ensnared uh, Sun Sun, Apache, and Mila Rose. Uh, so, the Fushibi aspect of this, though, caused the entire net to actually explode whenever uh, Momo, you know, cut the snare on her, uh, on her lieutenant badge, and it caused an explosion that severely injured Mila Rose, Apache, and Sun Sun. Therefore, we could probably assume if Fushibi was ever used on its own, it probably just produces an explosion or maybe like a glowing orb that you can toss at your opponent like a bomb or stick a TNT or something like that. Hado 31 is Shakaho. Okay, this is probably one of the most common ones in the entire story. Uh, story. Uh, red Fire Flash, very handy. Uh, Ruki has used this. Renji, it's the only. It's usually the keto that he tries and usually fails at. Um, you know, it just creates a red ball of energy that explodes in the firestorm whenever it hits something. Hado 32 is Okasen, which means, uh, which means, uh, uh. Name one more keto spell. God damn. Okay, listen. Listen to me, Nick. I'm Chris. I know you love me. Okay? <laughs> I know what this is. It's in the 30s. I can't pronounce its Japanese name. It's like Yellow War Crash or something. You need to give me an answer. What are you saying its name is? Y yellow War. Yellow. <sighs> damn it, Chris! <laughs> that is incorrect. Nick gets the bonus points. Oh, Chris. You were so close. Okasin, Yellow Fire Flash. Yellow was in the title, Chris! Um, yeah, anyway, it's pretty much the same kind of spell as Shakaho, except a colored yellow, and it has a much more wider arc, so uh, more damage can be dealt out by using it. Hado 33 is Sokatsui, another technique that's very predominantly used by Ruki Akuchiki, and this kind of ends out the different colors. See what Kubo did there? Hado 31 is red, Hado 32 is yellow, and Hado 33 is blue. Yeah. Now, despite the fact that it's called um, Blue Fire Crashdown, usually whenever Sokatsui is used in the anime, there's actually like a uh, an electrical sound effect used in the background. Even though the literal translation is it's Blue Fire that attacks the opponent, and clearly what Kubo was going for was like the different levels of fire. You know, red, then yellow, and then the really hot fire is blue. Blue, not electricity. Auto number 54 is Haiyan, uh, another fire spell. It was used by Tozen to completely disintegrate uh, Grim Zhao's arm after uh, he cut it off. It was also referred to as the Abolition Flame, which is a kick-ass technique, uh, name anyway, which is why, of course, it was only used one time. But apparently it was a purple fireball that disintegrated anything it came in contact with, including Grim Zhao's arm, which I guess would still have Hario on it, so pretty damn powerful keto, I guess. Hado number 57 is Daichi Tenyo, uh, one of the keto spells that we actually don't get to see in the anime because it wasn't revealed until the Thousand Year Blood War arc. Yumachika used this against zombified Bambietta and as a way for uh, Ikaku to kind of like, you know, obscure Bambietta's bomb so he can get to her. Basically, it just creates, a, if there's any rubble, I guess, in the area, that's the only way you can use this. It rises up a bunch of boulders, I guess, and just flings them at the opponent or debris or whatever's lying around you, whatever's handy, I guess. Basically turns you into an earthbender. Toph would be proud. Hado 58 is Tenron. Uh, this is a technique that Izuru used against Avarama. Basically what he did was he clasped his hands together and it created a whirlwind or a vortex. So it's a wind type keto that uh, blasts away your opponents. Hado number 63, Raikoho, is probably my favorite keto. I believe it's referred to as, uh, like, the Thunder Roar Cannon or Thunder Roar Seer or something like that. Um, it basically, it's just a massive fuck-off lightning bolt from the opponent's hand. Uh, Kukaku used this when she was act actually in the manga. This is a fun little trivia fact. In the manga, Kukaku used this to take out one of the giants, uh, that were, you know, that were under the control of Aizen's Kyokasui gets. In the anime, she just uses it on the Sokilku Hill to kind of, like, make her arrival a little bit more flashy. 
Uh, Aizen later used it against Ishin. Probably, I think, 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 one of the only times that Aizen used a Kido that wasn't Black Coffin. Um, but yeah, it's just a massive lightning bolt that comes out of your hands. So, pretty much a cooler version of uh, Byakurai, basically. Hado number 73 is Soren Sokatsui, and the first example we get to see of a Keto that just uh, doubles or, you know, adds another Keto on top of it. Basically, it's just two Sokatsuis together for one massive, big, you know, blue fire crash attack. Hado number 78 is known as Zangurin, uh, or, or uh, as uh, Shunsui called it, uh, Keto Blade. Basically, when he was fighting against Lilia, he noticed that none of his attacks were working, so he was like, oh, maybe if I use a blade of Keto, it would work. Uh, actually, what this technique is, it, it creates a ring around the caster that has like a bunch of like sharp edges on it, and then the ring just expands, slicing everything uh, around them in like a circular pattern, and it completely destroyed the building they were on, like sliced it in half and caused the building to collapse. Uh, but it did nothing against Lilia. Ah, oh, here we go, guys. Hotto number 88. Here you, Gekizoko Shintei Raiho. I love saying that shit. I'm gonna do it again. Here you, Gekizoko Shintei Raiho. Um, basically, okay, okay. So I might have been underestimating the massive fuck off lightning attacks up till this point. Byakurai. Wimpy little lightning bolt from your finger. Raikoho. Okay, bigger lightning bolt from your entire hand. Hiryo Gekizoko Shintei Raiho is the motherfucking lightning bolt to end motherfucking lightning bolts, okay? Both hands together, super high level keto, and just boom! Like an entire vortex of freaking electricity just nukes everything in its path. Unless you're Aizen and you have Donku. Have I been stating that this is an OP fucking technique? Come on! Okay, so now we get to the level 90 Hottos. Now, Aizen himself stated that once you get to the level 90s, uh, they're kind of unwieldy or difficult to control, even for him. Um, and usually when you use these techniques as we get higher up, sometimes they even involve a sacrifice of the user. So a lot of these are known as like forbidden techniques that you're really not supposed to master because they're so dangerous. So Hotto number 90, we don't actually get to see it too much. I think we only get to see it like one time partially in the entire story. It's uh, Kurohitsugi uh, or Hitsugi or whatever. Uh, it means black coffin. You do this thing with your hands and then it creates a black coffin that I guess impales your opponent like the Iron Maiden or something. Uh, I think Aizen kind of used it when he turned into a god and he made like a really big one that basically warped time and space and made gravity his bitch or whatever. Ichigo just kind of slapped it and destroyed the whole thing so it can't be that much of an awesome technique really. Hado 91 was used by Urahara and Senju Koten Taiho. Uh, basically a bunch of like energy beams that gather around the caster and then just all converge and attack at the opponent all at once, resulting in a huge explosion. Uh, it's level 91, so it's uh, pretty damaging. Pretty damaging. Aizen only managed to survive it because, you know, he's god or whatever. Hado 96 Itokaso is one of those forbidden spells that requires a sacrifice or whatever. So anyway, Yamamoto used it against Aizen, lost his left arm in the process, but the result was a huge, huge explosion that literally dwarves the buildings of Karakura Town. So we're easily talking like several hundred fucking feet tall. This giant blade shaped like um, you know, like fiery death basically appears. Uh, did absolutely nothing to Aizen though. Didn't even like really singe his hair or something. But um, yeah, I'm really glad Yamamoto did all that and lost his left arm just so Aizen could, you know, his clothes could get a little bit scuffed, but not really. And finally we get to Hado 99, the most recent spell used in the series, the last Keto spell used in the series actually, and the highest level Hado, Gonryo Tenmatsu, or like the five war dragons or some shit. Awesome sounding name! Um, but it doesn't really go anywhere. Aizen uses it, uh, which by the way, he was restrained at the time, so whatever. Anyway, Aizen uses it uh, while wearing his binding outfit against Yuha, and you'd think the name suggests that like five dragons would like appear at the same time surrounding the opponent, and then like nuking them from like all the different directions with different elements or some shit. Like this is the culminative, this is the ultimate Keto, this is the apex of Hado. But no, it just kind of destroys, wrecks the ground a little bit, knocks up some debris, and like a dragon appears behind Aizen, and it looks cool, I guess, but uh, that's all we really get to see from it. I would like to say that if Aizen wasn't wearing the binding gear, the BDSM gear, maybe it would be cooler, but, uh, or maybe if he used the incantation, I, I, I don't know. 
All right, so those are all the autos that are numbered. We have a few now that are not numbered, or rather numbered, but they're in a different class. As with the hidden auto that was used by Ichibei Hiyosubi in his fight against Yuha, it was referred to as Teputsatsu, which is like Iron Wind Severing Kill. This one also involves a dragon, except this dragon actually does shit. It creates a dragon image that, like, apparently, like, breathes on the enemy, and it, like, like, like it's supposed to damage them, I guess, through the wind, I suppose. Uh, it did a little bit of damage on Yuha, but nothing really that serious. Although, considering it's a hidden auto, number three, I can imagine, like, there's a bunch of other ones that are also hidden and obscured, but, you know, fuck if we're ever gonna find out about those. Uh, in addition to that, we also have a modified uh, Hado, uh, Jugeki Byakurai, that was developed by Uehara. So Byakurai, as I stated, was Hado number four, just pale lightning, uh, but he modified it in his own way. I guess he maybe combined it with his Benihime, Zanpakutaro, or whatever. Uh, so basically, Jugeki Bi uh, Byakurai is the same exact thing, except it's a more compressed uh, energy beam, I guess. Instead of lightning, it's red. It's like a red energy beam that you basically shoot at your opponent and can pierce really durable foes, as with the case with Aizen. He was already going through his god transformation. I can't imagine Byakurai, a regular one, he would just kind of like like ping right off of him, but this one actually pierced his entire body, uh, even though he was taken by surprise. So, I'm assuming Urohara also modded a couple of other Kido to, you know, be more efficient in combat. This also brings up an interesting point that Keto, like all the numbered stuff, that's all just the stuff you learn at the academy. I, I would assume there's a spell book somewhere like, okay, this is Hado number 96 and this is why you should never use it, but here's the incantation anyway. You know, that kind of shit. But Keto, like I said, I guess is malleable. You know, it's using the Riatsu of the Shinigami to fuel it, so therefore you can kind of create your own stuff, you know, depending on how skilled you are and how intelligent you are with Keto. As with Hachi, he has a couple of techniques that I don't think are numbered he might have actually created on his own such as Hachigyo Sogai, which uh, he uses to protect the visor hideout, which I'm assuming he also named after himself because he's very proud of it, you know. Uh, and then as well as that, we also have his Gates of the Four Beasts, Gate of the Dragon Tail, Ryubi no Jomon, Gate of the Tiger Fang, Koko no Jomon, Gate of the Turtle Shell, Kigai no Jomon, and Gate of the Phoenix Wing, Hokyo no Jomon. Together they meet and they create the Barrier of the Four Beasts, Shiju no Simon! Which I guess would pretty much be the strongest barrier we've seen in the entire series. It was able to take a point blank shot from Jokoho Rai Koban. It got cracked, but it didn't get destroyed. Uh, although Hachi mentions, wow, to crack the Shiju no Simon in that degree, that was pretty damn powerful technique. Uh, also, it's just the OCD enemy, but it bugs me that you have three of the dra uh, three of the uh, beast gates on you know each side. It basically makes like a cube, and so you have like. Gate of the Dragon Tail, Gate of the Tiger Fang, and Gate of the Turtle Shell, but the last side of the cube is actually bare, as well as the bottom, and the top is actually covered by the, you know, the Phoenix Wing Gate, so, you know, just seems like an obvious weakness to me, but whatever, it looks cool. Additionally, this might just be because Hachi is really adept at using Keto, and he's combining it with his hollow powers, but he has a few other barriers as well that we don't really get to see being utilized by anybody else. Uh, Ropo Fujin was that, like, uh, cross-shaped barrier, like the two intersecting crosses that he used to uh, bind Baragon uh, when he first arrived on the battlefield. That was the one that Baragon just kind of eroded with his technique, and he had that spiel about how Keto might last a thousand years, but nothing lasts forever. Um, he also had his standing ovation technique, a technique where after he donned his hollow mask, he like snapped his fingers, added a bunch of barriers around the heads of the Gileons, and then just, you know, and then the barriers just severed their heads like that. Uh, a technique called Goyo Gai, which is like just a standard five-sided protection barrier he used to heal Hiori. Uh, Hako Okure, farewell box, and that's the technique that he used to he, he severed his own arm that was being corroded by Baragon's Respira, severed his own arm, and then teleported it into Baragon without Baragon even being aware of what anything that happened. I just can't believe that there's like a teleportation keto because we're going to get to that later. It's like a forbidden technique, so I don't know if that's what he used or maybe it was something different. On top of those barriers, we also get a bunch of other ones in the series. Uh, Toshiro used a barrier technique called Kyokomon, or like Mirror Door, or something. Uh, uses it to protect people. Apparently, it's pretty hard to break from the outside, but I guess if you're pretty skilled with Keto, you can get out from the inside. Uh, Aizen uh, was pretty adept at using Keto, so he placed a bunch of like time-release Keto on him, uh, such as his uh, El Escadu. Oh, and by the way, we're going into Spanish now. I have enough problems with the freaking Japanese pronunciation, but just... I apologize if you're Spanish. I apologize because I'm gonna fuck this up eight ways to Sunday. Is it pronounced Escudo? Escudo? 
Escado, I don't know, what, what, whatever, shield, it means shield, okay, so, anyway, he has a time release barrier on the back of the neck that he uses to protect against Ichigo's attack, and he has another one simply referred to as the shield that he can summon at any time, I guess, he uses this to protect against, uh, Shunsui's attack. Uh, we also have Hakudan Kepiki, the technique that Nanao created specifically to repel Quincy Riatsu. Uh, I think it was called, like, the white severing barrier, like, the white shunning barrier, so, whatever, Nanao, fucking racist, whatever. Um, anyway, yeah, it basically works by actually extracting Quincy Riatsu from their first invasion and then incorporating it into a barrier that uh, Hashwolf stated that he could maybe break through it eventually. He was kind of like siphoning off the Riatsu from one side, but uh, Nanao actually used another technique that was very similar to it, and she was very confident that Hashwolf wouldn't be able to break through, uh, but we didn't get to see the full extent of what that barrier could do or if it was something else altogether. Finally, we have two techniques from Uohara. We have Futsatsu Kake. Uh, that's the technique that binds those Riatsu handcuffs on uh, Aizen. That because apparently the uh, vents or the exhaust ports for the Shinigamis like Riatsu, how the Riatsu vents out of their body, it's in their wrists. And then by plugging those with uh, those Riatsu handcuffs, Futsatsu Kekai, uh, the Riatsu builds up inside of you before it just eventually explodes from the inside out. Um, of course, it doesn't kill Aizen because he's a god, but whatever. And then we have the technique that actually managed to seal Aizen, Kyuju Korek. Oh, god damn it. Kyuju Koreki Kaku Fumetsu? Yeah, okay. Um, well, this creates a bunch of, like, pillars or staffs. They each have, like, the different cross patterns on them. It kind of worked like an infection, really, when Aizen was being afflicted by, you know, that's the moment where all these, you know, things are, like, these spiny cross things are jutting out of him, and he's pulling them off, and he's like, it's like, the, uh, the winner should speak of how the world should be rather than how it should currently operate. I will be the one to rule everything! And then he just gets completely absorbed by it and turns into, like, a giant version of it. Uh, and that's how, that's the seal that takes out Aizen, uh, you know, in the fake Karakura Town arc for the end of it. <sighs> Alright, are we done yet? No, we're not, because we still have some uncategorized spells, some spells that don't exactly fit into Bakudo or Hado. They're not really, you know, healing spells or uh, barriers or seals or anything like that. No, these are spells like those forbidding Kidos I mentioned earlier, like uh, the time stop and uh, teleportation techniques that Tessai used. These are forbidden techniques that were punishable by law. Uh, he was going to, Tessai was going to be sentenced to the third level of the underground prison, uh, Shugo for utilizing these techniques. One of them just freezes time in one place for, I guess, an indefinite amount of time. And another one actually is like long range teleportation. You know, he teleported them from the middle of Rukon District all the way to the middle of the 12th Division barracks with great precision. Uh, once again, Tessai is a Keto master, so it would make sense. We also have the Keki Kaigi, or the uh, World Tying Rite. This was the technique that Urahara used to actually open up the Garganta. Yeah, okay, so the Garganta, there's like a shit ton of different methods you can open it. Apparently the Menos Grande can just like rip it open, uh, a Spada and a wrong card just sort of like tap the sky and make it open. Uh, you see later that Yukio is able to access it and shit like that. Uh, Mayori figures it out using those two giant ball things that open it. Uh, the Uohara method of using it though is you have like these two large like staves of wood or something and then you stand on one of them and you like recite an incantation like it would be like a Kido and then that opens like a, a giant sky vagina that you can jump into, into the Garganta. So, don't really know where that one is placed on the keto board. Probably something that Uohara just created. Uh, we also have Senton Hakuja. Uh, that's the technique that back in the Soul Society, that's what uh, Tozen used to like teleport Renji and Rukia back to this execution grounds. Gein and Aizen used it to get out of the uh, Senjiodo Kyorin you know, from the Central 46 all the way to this execution grounds. So it's once again a type of teleportation technique. Um, and then finally, we have the Honky Sozai technique, the technique that Yoroichi uses against uh, Soyphone. So basically, they both had Kido active. You know, Soyphone had her, uh, Shunko, Yoroichi had hers, and they went to attack each other. And then, in order to kind of like nullify the attack, Yoroichi, you know, reached out her hand. It came in contact with uh, Soyphone's, and because her Kido was like an equal opposite reaction to Soyphone's. <laughs> as if the laws of physics apply here at fucking all, uh, it, like, stopped and, like, nullified both of them at one point, so her attack, you know, failed. Uh, so there's that. And now, 
Finally, before I bid you adieu, we have some anime-only techniques. Some techniques that were only used uh, by characters in the anime that don't really fit in uh, to the canon of the story. Uh, so first we have two Bakados that are number nine. We have Geki that was used by Rukia, uh, probably one of the first Kitos actually used in the story before Kito was really flushed out. Sorry, fleshed out, so I can understand why that had that. Uh, that was a technique she used against uh, Grand Fisher. She, like, spelled out, like, a kanji in the air and then, like, Geki! And then it, like restrain Grand Fisher, looked like he was being choked to death, you know, so like a kind of a ceiling technique, sort of. Uh, also at number nine, we have Horin, which is a technique that kind of works also like a rope that was used in the Zanpakuto arc by uh, Momo. And in addition to that, we also have three Hottos that were used in anime only during the Zanpakuto arc by uh, Koga Kushiki. We have uh, Kogyo Baku, which was like adamantine blast. It was like a technique that basically shot a giant fireball. We have Gaki Reko, which was a technique that shot out like a bunch of like light fangs at the target. Uh, very similar to Yelp and Roncon, except it was like, you know, uh, an offensive technique. Uh, and then we have... Um, Hyoga Sa Seiran, which is a like a blizzard, you know, like like I think it was like Wolf's Winter Fang or something like that. So it just shoots a blizzard of snow at the target. I think the only keto that displayed uh, the ability to uh, channel uh, snow or ice. Okay, is that it though? Did I get them all? I mean, we're not going to go in every single barrier. Yeah. Oh yeah, that that pyramid thing that Yamamoto did in the Zanpakuto filler arc. Yeah, that's really relevant. Oh, how about all those barriers that Mayori used in the freaking uh, uh a thousand year blood war arc against the zombies? Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Fine. Whatever. Yeah. Those are regular barriers too. They just invented them. Whatever. Okay. Are we done? You sure? Okay. Thank you for attending my class today uh, for Keto 101. This will be Techie 101. Get, get the fuck out of my classroom. I left one out on purpose. She's so Kekai, the sealing spell that uh, Genrei Kuchki used to seal Koga Kuchki in the Zanpakuto Rebellion arc. I am putting this at the very end of the video because I am legitimately curious on how many people will bust my balls over leaving out that one obscure keto that was used that one time in an anime only arc that isn't canon. I'm assuming there's going to be quite a few.